five important points that I am going to discuss on sialolithiasis. The most common type, the most common type, answer is it's a submandibular gland plus Wharton's duct stones. Then let us talk about this question. A 22 year old male presenting with a painful lump over the submandibular gland region on intake of the food. Now, which decreases 2 to 3 years post prandially. An OPG was done, and the following is the image. So, if you see, this is a question on sialolithiasis. Now, I will go for a brief discussion of sialolithiasis. Now, when we talk about sialolithiasis, when we talk about sialolithiasis, what are the important points on sialolithiasis? One very important point about sialolithiasis is you have to understand where the stone is. Five important points that I am going to discuss on sialolithiasis. The most common type, the most common type, answer is it's a submandibular gland plus Wharton's duct stones. Why it is the submandibular gland which is actually a potential site for the stones? The answer is first of all anti-gravity drainage point number one. The second very important point is that the duct is hooked by lingual nerve. So lingual nerve is hooking the duct. The third is rich calcium concentration and then second is high viscosity. So all these things actually favor the precipitation of stone. Now thus whenever we are planning about the management of submandibular gland stone, it is very essential to understand what is the location of the stone with respect to this lingual nerve. Now when we are talking about a very basic concept of this lingual nerve related anatomy, one more thing that we have to understand is the presentation. Now when we talk about the presentation, the classical presentation is painful swelling plus lump over the submandibular gland region over the submandibular gland region on intake of food. Now, do you know why this happens? This happens because just after you take the meals, there is an increased surge of saliva. But the saliva cannot be drained out. Why? Because of the blockage. So, there is a painful swelling over the submandibular gland region. Why this is known as salivary colic? Because this pain shoots up and then 2-3 to three hours later, Two to three hours later, actually this goes down. So pain which shoots up and comes back to the baseline. This is what is known as colic, salivary colic. Now when we talk about the treatment part, the first thing that we have to understand is the location of stone with respect to lingual nerve. So with respect to lingual nerve, we want the position of the stone. And how can you trace it? You can trace it with respect to the second molar. So on OPG, on OPG, we look at the second molar, second molar. So if it is anterior to it, if it is posterior to it. On CT scan, yes, again you can see the location of stone with respect to the second molar or with respect to the nerve. Because second molar is the guide for the lingual nerve. So if it is anterior to this, what is the surgery that we use? We go for an oral approach. And what do we do? In an oral approach, we go inside. We do the duct exploration and along with the duct exploration, we will go for what? Removal of the stone. So duct exploration plus removal of stone, this is what is very, very, very important. Now when we talk about the posterior, if the stone is posterior, there are two or three important things. If the stone is posterior, we go for cervical approach. Now when we talk about cervical approach, what are the important things? We don't go via oral cavity. Why? Because if we go for an oral cavity route, the first thing that we will encounter is what? The lingual nerve. So nerve is very important. Instead, we make an incision directly over the neck and we ligate the duct as far as possible, as high as possible. And we take out the duct along with the, the remnant of the duct that is that we have ligated on. We leave it and remaining duct that is attached to the gland, we take it out. So resection of the gland, resection of gland 
what gland submandibular gland with ligation of duct under vision ligation of duct under vision remember here what did you do in this oral approach you went inside you opened the duct you took out the stone and remember don't close the duct because if you close the wartens duct it will get stenosed already the saliva is coming out from the orifice it will come from this orifice also so let us see in this if you see the stone where is stone it is quite behind it is posterior to the lingual nerve so it since it is posterior to lingual nerve the best management here we can go for duct exploration plus stone removal no submandibular gland excision yes and remember or lithotripsy is also a yes nowadays we can even go for lithotripsy but option c is far 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 better than option d hence i will go for option c subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplader